Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So this is Dave's motor right here. I had cleaned it all up using carburetor cleaner and a toothbrush. Just a regular can of carburetor cleaner to basically degreases it and cleans it. Used a toothbrush to get into all the cracks and crevices. And there you have it. So that's what we end up with for a motor. And then I hit it with some of this. This is just gloss engine enamel. And it's the uh, one that heats up to about 500 degrees or 550 I should say so this is a good stuff right here you want to use and uh, got a coat on there already and uh, tonight we're gonna mount this on there so I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing off camera because I am doing this off camera it's kind of a tedious thing but basically you just gotta spray it clean it all up and you know hit it with paint make it look pretty and remember how the the head was all white and corroded I used an old spark plug in there we're gonna replace the spark plug get a new plug for this thing and uh, that's pretty much it guys so I just wanted to show you that and then uh, well I'll see you in a little bit when we put this motor on the frame tonight all right so now I get out my pressure washer my Harbor Freight electric pressure washer it's around four, 12 to 1400 psi something like that um, and what I did was I sprayed the frame down with this this is engine degreaser by gunk and the stuff works out um, tremendously so it's going to take all the oil and stuff that was on the frame, all the sludge. We're going to get rid of all that. And then, uh, because I don't want to put the engine on the uh, on the bike where it's got all the all the crap on it. And then while we're here, we're going to hose it down. Get the whole thing hosed down, get it all cleaned up a bit. And then we're going to go work on it again. And then after that's all done, um, after the engine's on, we'll pressure wash it. We'll, we'll actually, we'll hose wash it. Because you don't want to pressure wash a new painted engine. And then uh, that'll be it. So hopefully we can get this thing done but wrapped up by the weekend. I am looking forward to this. So I can't wait to do a first start on it. Um, everything checked out great. Now it's a, now we're at the point where reassembly. Alright guys, I'll see you in a little bit. Alright, now she is dirt free. Frames cleaned up nicely. Can't complain about this, huh guys? Look at this thing. It's beautiful. God. I have the uh, light in the other room in the uh, shed there so it's all nice and degreased all nice and cleaned up look at this guys 756 original miles unbelievable this bike is in pristine condition for the you know for a year and sitting around and all that we have some things we have to do to it like I said we had to do the motor I'm gonna clean up that clutch cover that's why it's on it's still connected um, the clutch mechanism piece is, is uh what you call it there where the cable goes in is cracked but i have another one for it so i'm not worried about that and i gotta fix this wire right here i got a saw to that that was the broken wire um and that's pretty much it for that then i can put this all on there and boom this bike is going to be so sweet anyway so that's a little update for you now we're going to get this thing on the lift and we will tonight get into putting that engine on Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So we have Dave's bike on the lift right now. You might notice that this little bag is up here. I put the uh, carburetor and the magneto in a bag when I pressure washed. That way I didn't contaminate or get anything in there. So we're going to be mounting the engine on the frame tonight. Let me shrink you guys down a little bit. And um, well, we're going to be putting the magneto and the carburetor on for tonight's video. And then tomorrow night we'll go ahead and wrap up the rest of the other side cover because i have to do some cleaning on that one so we're not going to do that tonight but we are going to it's getting late you can see it's pretty dark out so what we're going to do is get the engine mounted get the magneto and the carburetor mounted and then uh, go from there so let me get you guys in the stand but before i do please take a moment hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when i post a video whoop, you get it all right guys let me get you guys in the stand all right cool so one of the things you'll notice is that the bolts the motor mounts are all put back where they belong in the direction they came off of this right here makes it a lot easier when i go to reassemble the motor i actually know where all the bolts are to it and i can't stress the importance of this because you'll know what direction they come out of it's just it's a habit so when you start working on a bike and you start putting bolts and stuff back where they came from, it does make your life a lot easier. And you uh, you don't lose any parts, like I said. So 
And if you're new to doing this type of stuff, you can tell, you know, bolts are longer than the other. It's always nice to know the orientation for which they came out of. So, all right, guys, let me go grab the engine and we'll throw it on. I'm actually going to put it through to the other side. Right into here. Okay. Yeah, with me. I'm coming. I'm old. The frame. Right. Almost there. I like it when it works like that, don't you? And as you can see, I painted the cylinder head, painted the cylinder, got all that oxidization, all that corrosion off of it. And now I'm going to put my top bolt in up here if I can, if the bike won't allow me. All right, so I can't put it in like that because the motor's sitting down. So let me show you guys a quick trick. Take a Phillips screwdriver. I'm gonna stick it in the bottom hole here and kind of work the engine up through the bolt there. And then I can tip it back and put the bolt through. Kind of like that. Have to get up a little further. Nope, ain't gonna work like that. Only because I'm out of leverage. Out of leverage. There we go. Wind up putting the bottom one in first, I guess. Because the pot right here is hitting the frame. So we'll put it on the bottom here. Put up on the motor. And she's in there. Now, top one in. Okay. Okay. Motor sitting on the back too, upper and lower, and now we got to put the front one in. The front one, you always want to do this loose. You don't want to do this when it's all, all tight. Okay. Just it doesn't make for a very good uh, experience. So don't put one in and then tighten it. Always put them all together loose. This will allow the bike to. Relax a tad, get into its position. And have no stress. In the, the um, orientation of the washers, it goes flat, lock. Let me show you this here. Look. So it goes flat, lock, and then nut. That's the orientation, how they go on. Flat washer goes in first. Then the lock washer, then the nut. And on this side right here, only this side right here, the bolt only gets a flat washer. So, like so. And then it goes the flat up against the metal, the lock washer, and then the nut again. Now for the short engine mount. This one already has, does, there's no washer on this side because it's built into the, uh, the bolt head. Okay. Now on the other end of the bolts, there is a flat washer and a big giant nut, which is a 17 millimeter. And that goes on the back side of each one of these main mounts. All right, gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Start in the front there. Boom. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna bore you with tightening all those up on screen, but I'm gonna get this one, this one up top here, and this bottom one down here. I'm gonna tighten all those, and I'll be right back. All right, so let's get this bag ripped off here. A nice carburetor, and so the bag is all wet, but everything else is dry. That is why we do that. To keep everything nice and dry. All right, let's cut everything loose. Carburetor is loose. That's gonna go up and over there. That'll be next. Okay. And then we have our magneto right here nice and protected okay this one comes down there boom 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 there's a spot let me see if we get some light up in here for you if you can see that all right yep okay good i'm gonna blow you up boom 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 okay so <coughs> right here here and here the mounting blade so let's get this into position and then there's a spot right here for the grommet where the wiring is going to tuck up through. The flat spot on the outside. There we go. And then this right here where the three screws go. This can be a pain in the neck to get in sometimes. Okay, we're just going to start the screws. Hold it in. There are three number two Phillips screws. You're just going to do them, not even hand tight, just snug. Okay. Okay. Okay, now this magneto is adjustable. You would adjust this with a timing light. You'd crack this three screws over, um, loose, I should say, like this. And then you'd be able to adjust your timing, advance or retard the timing by rotating this. This is not something you can do like on the KE100s, but you can see right here how you can adjust them, twist it. All right, so now, what we really need to do is get this timing set. So that's going to be a big thing. So I want to show you this. Right up here, you'll see the scribe line. I don't know if you can see that now. Let's see if we can blow you up a little bit more. This is important. Okay, do you see that line right there? Okay, see that line right there? They need to align. So this needs to be at that position. See right here is what I'm working right at the top of that screw. Right there, see that line? And then you'll get the little mark, the little pointer on the uh, the boss. Now it's past it, now it's past it, now it's on it. Okay, so now that's right there is where we got to set the timing. Okay, so I just tightened down the plate um, off camera. And uh, so I used my little M12 and it was just getting loud. So, anyway, then we come back over and we verify that the lines line up. And this one does. Then you have this wire right here. This is your neutral safety wire. Okay, so this is going to unscrew. Oh, let me show you this. There we go. Sorry, don't blow you down here. Okay, nope, too far. There we go. Okay, so this wire right here comes down and hooks on. So you see this little, these little tabs? These little tabs are wire holders. They're supposed to keep the wire back like that. And it fits onto it just like so. All right. So I'll show you guys what we had to do for that. On that. If you get that in there. Hold on a second. Which one is that? Okay. Hold on. Okay. Now on the other side of this plate is your shifter drum. And there's a little detent on it. And that when that comes around and hits that, that lets the light come on for the neutral. 
it out like that. Put some light on it here. And this goes in back of the screw and the washer. Washer right there. Here we go. That washer's being a pain in the neck, huh? Okay. All right. And then you want to make sure before you tighten it, you have it on the back side of these two, these two knobs, nubs, whatever you want to call them. And the reason for that is because if you don't have them on the back side of that nub, those two nubs, what will happen is the chain could catch it and rip it right out of the wiring harness. It'd be a big mess. This is right. Yeah, it was number one. Okay. And that is the number one Phillips screwdriver, by the way. So, once again, here's your grommet. The wiring comes out of the grommet on the outside of the case. And it's, it's held back by these two, these two little nubs, I call them. And then it loops around and then up to your neutral light. Okay. So, I apologize for the lighting. I am working on better lighting. Um, that is my next step. Okay, so then, the wood drift key. Make sure you put that in. Oh, I always try to put the uh, magneto so it's straight up and down. Okay, put that right in there like so. Boom, boom, boom. And let's see if we can get the three magnet flywheel on here. Look at that one shot deal boom all right now we'll get the the flat washer the lock washer and the nut now on this nut there is a flat side and a bevel side bevel side goes out I believe that's a 17 millimeter Yes, it is. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Now, I'm going to go get my torque wrench and a piston stop, and we will torque that down to 36 foot-pounds. I stand corrected. Checking it out here, and it says uh, flywheel nut, TC, TS125, 25 foot-pounds. Well, that's light, but that's what it calls for. So that's what we do. Specifications, guys. Specifications. So I'm installing my piston stop right here. Taking off the old spark plug. I set the new one in. That's not a new spark plug, but rotate this one goes down. Boom, boom, boom. 25 foot pounds. That's a lot. That's not much at all, but that's what it's saying. Okay, bring the piston up to it. I'll grab my handy dandy, my old school torque wrench, my old craftsman. Oh, let me get you guys in position here. So I'm out of your way, you're out of mine. All right, I love this thing. You get one of these here, you get these at yard sales. Okay. Five. 25 foot pounds right there guys okay the magneto is on now take my piston stop back out we're gonna get a new plug for it. we're not gonna use this old plug but I'm only using it so no dirt and debris get in there and I can still turn the engine over you know what I'm saying okay all right, so magnetos on and all plugged in. Here's the um, cable for the what you gonna call it there, the automatic oiler. Keep that off to the side for now. We have to remove the electrical tape from when I painted it. 
I cleaned up all the silicone that was around the motor and then painted the block. Okay. And then get this carburetor mounts, mounting nuts, I should say, and washers. Grab the gaskets. All right, and then this one right here. Make sure the intake is smooth, which it is. I just like to double, triple check. The O-ring goes on here. Okay. Then. Okay, now here's the trick with these. These are a pain in the neck because you can't just put the, the lock washer on. Or you can on, on this side, but you can't on the other side. So you have to move it just enough back to just start. Okay, and then you pull it forward. And I have to go on the other side and start the um, so I have to stop the washer and the nut on the other side as well. Because the choke is on this side, you won't be able to, um, what you call it there, get the nut on there. Kind of a tedious pain in the neck part right here tightening up this carburetor because it doesn't like to uh cooperate too much okay it's tight on that side Right on that side. Okay. So the carburetor is on and tight. Okay, who wants to see Kevin make a mess? Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up. Man, I do feel bad about the lighting, guys. I'm going to do something about that. Alright, so right now I'm working on the oil pump right here. I'm just going to take my plug out. Now, this is banjo is at an angle. It's supposed to be upward. But it's down at this. I'll show you why. Because when I pull this plug out, oil is going to want to come gushing out. And i got to kind of put it on as quick as possible. All right. So, move my cable out of my way. And I have to plug it right onto there. And that's going to go on very difficultly. Oh, maybe not. Okay. I like you. All the back. There we go. Okay, it's also going tight. All right. Now what I have to do is go get an eight millimeter, loosen it up, put it in position, and then tighten it up. All right. So now I'm going to take this wrench right here. I'm going to loosen this up. Put 
get the banjo up to where I need it and then give it a good old snug no don't go crazy tightening it okay you don't want to you don't want to snap it off And goes on there. Then you have your um, hose grommet, which is a pain in the neck to put on these things, or can be, I should say. The wiring fits up and over like that. The grommet goes through the line through here. Not on there quite yet. Has to go all the way around it. Okay, good. Just like that. All right. So then the next thing to do would be to hook up the cable, but I do not have the adapter yet. There's a little adapter that goes on the end of this, and I'm still waiting for that. I thought it came in, but didn't, and the one that was on this originally broke. So, we're just going to wind this in for now, put this up to there, and then that's where the little plastic piece goes. And then we can put the little door. There's a door. Um right here that goes on it and I don't happen to have that piece so that fits on there and then the chain so we're going to end it for right now right here I want to say thank you guys for watching hopefully this video helps sorry about the lighting I am working on a new um what do you call it the tripod that has the light on it so that right there is going to really make things pop and I can't wait to get that so that's really going to help you guys out. All right. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm out.